drum. Hey everyone, this is a pile of junk. This is for the Literally Trash Challenge with a load of other great YouTubers and this piece is in a terrible state of repair. I got this from Facebook Marketplace, it's been used in a garage and obviously just used for storage in a garage and it's full of dings and scratches and paint and some of the worst hardware I've ever seen. So I'll go around it, I'll show you what I'm going to do with this and hopefully you enjoy the transformation. And as always, thanks for watching. As the title to the challenge says, this literally is trash. I think a lot of people would probably just discard this and put it to landfill. But for this challenge, it's ideal. I want to see if I can bring it back to its former beauty. And at this point, I wasn't too sure, but if you watch to the end, you will be very, very surprised at what was underneath all this damage and paint, etc. The challenge is featuring quite a few of us, us restorers on YouTube, and I know you guys like watching these challenges, so stay tuned and you will see a beautiful transformation and I'll leave the link to the playlist for the other challenges in the description of the video. <laughs> I was going to remove the drawers but yeah that's I don't really think you can call that a drawer at the minute. So let's remove this. <laughs> okay. This is very stylish. String. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> the inside doesn't look too bad actually. Well, obviously it doesn't look great, but needs a good clean. And the obligatory dead spider, spider's webs, and there's some sort of mark in there. Not too sure what that is, but I'll do a bit of research on that. This one shouldn't be too hard to take off. There you go. <laughs> Dear me, terrible. Really worn and scratched in places, but hopefully it might just be in the finish because these are veneered fronts, so they won't take too much sanding out. So I'll just see what I can do. Let's take these off first. Oh, that's another easy one. Keep hold of that vintage piece. I've actually been looking for some sort of more period correct pulls online and I've managed to to get some that I think will look really nice. They need restoring but they should look uh, should look really nice when it's finished. So I'll show you them a bit later on in the video but these for now are going. A Beanese product. I don't know that manufacturer, I've not come across them before but I'll try and find something out and put it in the video. Try and save this somehow as well, this sticker. Put it back on somewhere. Once I've removed the bulk of the finish, I just go in with some 4-0 steel wool and more stripper just to get rid of any of the little bits left over. If you can hear a strange noise in the background, this is what it is. Hey duckies! <laughs> they come
come right up to the back door to be fed. I'm not too sure why, <laughs> why there's a piece of wire sticking through the side, but that should be easy enough to take off. Can't wait to get this rubbish off of this and see how it looks. Not everything's come off, which I didn't expect it to. It's quite a thick finish, this, even though it's failed in part. But it's quite a thick finish, and obviously there's quite a lot of paint and stuff on it as well. Bits of drips of varnish and all sorts. So I'll give this another go with the paint stripper. Go over it again, and we'll get it down to a position where we can have a look at the condition of the wood. You can feel it. When it's when you're scraping, you can. So that's where there's there's no finish on. It just glides, and as you scrape, you can feel it dragging. So do it smooth, and then when you find some dragging, go back and just add a little bit more pressure. It makes sure you keep it flat. Don't tilt the thing like that because you'll. I know it sounds obvious, but you'll you'll put the edge into the wood so you want to avoid that obviously okay carry on doing that now beautiful well it will be when it's finished <laughs> You can neutralise this stripper with soapy water. You can also use some methylated spirit, otherwise known as denatured alcohol. This is 4-0 wire wool, this isn't coarse wire wool. Do you want? It's cock. Yeah. <laughs> He's so cheeky. The one on the floor there, you. Oh. Go. Go. Oh, I don't want you very vocal today. Oh no, oh no, it's gone under there. Watch your, watch your paws. Have you got it? Good girl. Nutter. <laughs> got enough. Yeah. This drawer, the glue's obviously give up, or given up, should I say. That needs repairing. Obviously, this one needs completely rebuilding because the glue has totally failed on it. But it's no problem, I've got to do the others anyway, so yeah, we'll do that. This one has got this awful repair job previously done on it. I'm not too sure what that's hiding. And if I turn it over. Somebody's had a go at doing something with that. I'm putting a big nail in it, I'm not too sure. I think that's glue or silicone sealant, not too sure. So I'm going to tackle this. This has also got 
an issue with the veneer but I'll tackle that later this is still drying off that's damp I'll tackle that later but what I want to do now is just take the drawer completely apart just to have a look what's going on there Too sure what that glue is, but it's solid. Yeah. Mm, too sure what's going on here. Sorry, I forgot to press record again. What I've done is I've taken these sides off, that one was already missing, I've taken this side off, heated all this and managed to separate it from the base and I don't know, this looks like silicon sealant, like bathroom sealant, not too sure why but I think this part should sit in like a rebate there and it looks on first glance like that rebate is very very shallow so either that or something's come off the bottom there that should be on so I'll have a look at that and clean it up first and then see what we need to do wow this is going to take some <laughs> time to clean this up so as my good friend Jay says, I'll be back in 2000 years later. Right, I've managed to clean up all that sealant off there, it took me quite a while. I know what's wrong with this now. I don't know how it's happened, but these bow fronts are generally plywood that's been bent round a form and then they get veneered over the top and plywood is thin strips of wood that's glued in between pressed, laminated, left to dry and for some reason, and it's happening there, this little bit has been delaminated and it's, it's obviously come off at some point and you can see how it should look. It should be that thick and then what happens is the draw bottom then sits into that little channel. So for some reason, I don't know why, at some point in the past that's come off. It's obviously come unglued and just and just come off so I need to do a bit of work there's a couple there look you can see it's, it's delaminating a bit again same again on this end so I just need to glue those up and then what I'll have to do is cut some strips of wood the same thickness as that glue them together clamp them let them sit and then I've got a channel back again so I'll clean these up first and then I'll do that This is the delamination look, you can see. So some there, it's happening there, there, there as well. So I need to put glue in all these bits and then I need to make another strip. Now, when I was cleaning all this up, I had a look at the other drawer front and as I was looking at it, that just popped off. So that is what's missing from there. So I need to make one of those but I also need to clean this up, re-glue this and make sure that there's no delamination anywhere else. But because there's two that this has happened to, there's five drawers in total so what I'm going to have to do is check every single drawer and make sure these are sound and they're not just going to fall off in you know, a couple of months time, a couple of years time. I might as well take them off now, clean them up and re-glue them so <laughs> this is the thing with old pieces you just never know until you start working on them what what you're going to come across so no no big deal i need to make one for that and check all the others and re-glue them if needed so on to that Wow, this needs a lot of glue. <laughs> I 
I just needed to make that strip that was missing that I mentioned earlier and fortunately because this piece fell off the other drawer I use it as a template. Now the the plywood that I'm using isn't thick enough and I didn't have any of the same thickness of the one that was missing so what I'm doing is I'm cutting two pieces the same size and I'll have to laminate those together and then add it to the drawer. This is why you can never have too many clamps and I definitely need some more because I'm having to do this in in stages because I've just not got enough clamps. But this is what it is. Right, leave that to dry. So the piece I stuck together is all dried now. And I just need to stick that on there to create that groove the draw bottom will slide into. I mentioned earlier that I was going to check all the drawers to make sure the glue was sound. It wasn't and all five drawers needed taking apart and re-gluing. I just need to put this drawer together. I'm going to sand all the drawer inside and out, all the sides, all the underneath and everything. These little glue blocks I've taken off because most of them were dried out. I've cleaned them up, they need to go back on. Then I need to glue everything together. So I'll clean it up first. Yeah, I've put that on the wrong end. <laughs> Oops, never mind. I need glue on that end anyway. Once I've glued the drawer, I just want to make sure that it's all squared up before it dries. And to do that, I'm just using a set square and a tape measure just to make sure all the measurements are the same. The repair I've done on this drawer front, it was slightly higher because I doubled it up, it was a slightly thicker piece. So thinking about it, when I shut the drawers, the drawers are going to shut against this. So I don't want this to be further forward than the other drawers because it'll push this drawer out more. So all I'm doing is I'm just smoothing it off. And to be honest, it looks better because it's, it's getting rid of this very, very thin, rubbishy top layer of hardwood and leaving a much nicer finish. All completely sanded inside and out so I just need to actually I just need to do those corners because I use a circular sander 
I just use, need to use my triangular sander just to get in those corners up. Once I've done that, all the fronts are at 240. Look at that grain, that grain. <laughs> I'm so happy with that grain. It's going to look so nice when it's finished. I just need to do a repair on that. That's the bulk of the work on the drawers done. Just need to finish off the actual cabinet now. To clean the piece, I'm just using some warm water with a little bit of household bleaching. I don't normally use bleach, but this had a bit of a musty smell, um, probably due to some mildew. So I'm just trying to kill off that mildew with a little bit of bleach. Right, so this is the top. Everything's been stripped back. Just needs a bit of a sand, but I'll show you. This is the top, so we've got repair there, little repair there. Another one there, some more little repairs there, and another one. And on the side we've got these holes, that side, I thought we had some on this side, but... Oh yeah, <laughs> on that side, and then at the bottom, some repairs needed there, little veneer repair there, and then on the drawers, just one drawer that needs this repair doing. Different methods, some fill stick, some filler, some veneer repairs. I'll get on with that now. Before I start the repairs, I just want to give it a quick sand over with 240 grit sandpaper. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this on camera, but there's quite a deep, well, not, it's not really deep, but a deepish scratch going right across the grain there. Like I say, this veneer is quite thin, so what I want to try and do before I carry on sanding is try and lift that a little bit if I can. There's a scratch. So it's from about there. This is a damp cloth. I don't want to put too much heat on it because I don't want the veneer to come off. Right, I'll just leave this to dry. Hopefully that's raised some of the grain, filled in them cracks so when I sand, they hopefully will sand out. I'm gonna fill these with wood filler. Once they're dry, I can sand it. Have a look at it, obviously, I think I'm gonna stain it, but the grain that's missing in these filled, filled bits, I'm gonna to have to try and disguise that with some grain markers and maybe some pigments. But well, that's the next, that's a bit further down, the line. You could also do this with wax filler sticks, but it's a bit more difficult to put some grain pattern in it then. No, don't want to do that. The trick to this, if you if you drill down, so if you drill that way, that's what happens, it starts lifting the veneer a bit. So it's alright, I can glue that one, it won't be able to see it, but if you turn it the other way, like you're unscrewing, it gives you a cleaner drill. So I could tip that. The reason I drilled the holes is just simply to make them a little bit bigger and that's to accommodate these wooden dowels that I'm using to plug up the holes. So a little bit of wood glue and then insert the dowels to plug up the holes. I just need to do this little veneer repair and I keep a lot of old veneer from old furniture so I'm just trying to find the best match from the offcuts that I've got. It's 
First thing to do when repairing this is to strain it up, clean up the edge so you've got a nice straight crisp edge for the veneer to go. Try and cut it at an angle, it just looks better on the grain. Then you make a little template with some tape and then cut an appropriate piece of veneer to stick in. <sighs> Forgot to hit record again. So basically what I've done is I've just cut that angle out of this piece of old veneer. Nice and smooth that now. quite a lot of flakes of veneer coming off here obviously that's really thin so what to do with this now what I've decided to do with this chipped edge is to put a chamfer on it like a, a 45 degree chamfer and obviously it's bringing through the backing but the line is nice and straight and once it's stained it may well look a different colour but it'll just look like a border so rather than loads of bits of cracks and flakes coming out it should look a lot better, so that's what I'm doing. This is the only draw that's a bit of a mess. The veneer was so thin there, it's just sort of flaked off, so I've blended that in. Once it's finished and stained and everything, I'll see how it looks, and then I'll just touch that up and try and match the grain in. With this repair, Normally what you might do is, is try and put a piece of veneer in there but to match this intricate grain is, is going to be an absolute nightmare with veneer. I just haven't got anything and I'd never find anything anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that with some filler um, and then once it's smoothed off, dry, stained, I'm going to have a look and see if I can mimic the grain pattern coming through it to try and disguise it. just need to pick which stain colour I'm going to use now because I am staining the piece. It's a little bit orangey with a clear finish and I want it to be a bit browner. More brown, I don't know brown as a word, but more brown. So these are what I've got in stock at the moment. It'll look similar to this. It's not necessarily going to look exactly the same as it's just a guide. So I will make a decision. I've decided to go with walnut. One of my favourite colours this, so I'll just stick to my favourites. I don't know whether you can hear that. This is UK weather. It's currently middle of April and it's hailstoning outside and ten minutes ago the sun was shining. the poor ducks. Aww.
obviously there's some patches that are going to need some additional work so get the stain on first and see where we're at. This is the drawer that I did the repair on that I think needs some colour matching where I put the filler in but that's the filler can you see I mean obviously you can see it but it's come out much better than I thought once it's all dried so what I'm going to do I'll put a coat of lacquer just one over this and see what it looks like when it's sort of wet the final finish and see what that looks like I'll obviously have to do some sort of graining but Let's just see how it looks and then we'll take it from there. This is the repair after the first coat of lacquer. There. And obviously you can still see it but it's almost insignificant. So I could go at this with different pigments and try and colour match it totally but I'm not confident that I could get a better job than this so I might just leave that sometimes you've just got to say right well that's good enough and will what I do next make it any better and, and, and I don't think it will so I think I'm going to leave that I'll just do a little bit of touch up but yeah happy with that This edge is a little bit light, so I'm just going to use some of these little grain markers. This is just a bit light round there, so I'm going to darken it up a bit. I've tried with the marker pens and it, it's not very good so I'm going to give these a try I've not really used these and these are natural earth pigments in all different colors and all you do is you just literally a little bit of polish more meths methylated spirit or denatured alcohol and you take a little and you just mix so you do that until you get a color you think matches a little bit now that's where the <laughs> that's where the skill comes in and that's where the experience comes in so like I say it's not something I've done a lot before so I'm gonna have a go at this off camera and I'll show you when I've finished <laughs> wish me luck that's where I'm up to so just need to let that dry off and hopefully it shouldn't be too bad once it's got the top coat on. So I'm going to try and restore this hardware. <laughs> no, I'm not really. Get rid of them. I managed to source online some used vintage hardware which is period correct for this piece but obviously they still need restoring so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to restore them there you go 
So that's before, obviously, and that's that's after. So I've got still kept the rage, but a lot nicer. We are coming to the end of the restoration and the end of the video. So if you like what you've seen so far, please give it a thumbs up, it really helps. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing. I'd like to say a massive thank you to everybody that supports the channel, whether that's through the Buy Me A Coffee app, through the Amazon wish list, or through the Super Thanks button. I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave all the links in the description. And don't forget, this is part of the Literally Trash Challenge, so I will leave a link to the playlist in the description, and I'll also leave a link on the end screen. So head over to those, and I hope you enjoy them. I'm sure you will. And as always, thanks for watching.